So somehow I managed to gouge three of my V wheels on the Y axis. You can see two of them here. I don't know how I did it. Um, it almost had to be that I over tightened. Um, but anyway, I gouged them and they never would pop back out on their own. So I ordered three brand new V wheels from Derek and they're going to save the day. So clearly the most difficult part of this repair is going to be removing this one actually, removing the wheel, the polycarbonate wheel from the bearing assembly. Because it is pressed on there rather tightly. And I was uh, informed by Derek at Millwright. I guess I'm, I'm sure they've tried to remove them before. You know, all the various testing and prototyping and whatnot they've done with building this. That it's uh, almost impossible to remove that V-wheel from the bearing assembly without destroying or at least mauling the bearing. So, what I proposed to him, and now to you, is that I'll just cut that V-wheel off of the bearing assembly. Ta-da! Now for my next trick, folks. My well, next trick, I'll bump the camera. Uh, so I've got to take this out. Well, it doesn't matter that much that I keep this in the same orientation that it was installed originally, but I'm going to try to just for the hell of it. So yeah, here's the here's the gouged one here. Eccentric, so. Yeah, so that pops right off pretty easily, that nylock that does. That should just dry it up. These are, your... actually that's not the eccentric, the eccentric's on the outside, so at least just your normal spacer there. Yeah, these two over here on the inside, which will not have your eccentric, so the damage happened to the non-eccentric side. Yeah, there you can see the gouge. But anyway, I'm going to take a... Well, let me try to press these out just for the hell of it. Although now, because there's a little ridge on the inside, so you're not going to be able to press straight through. So that's not going to happen. If you try to get in there and pry it out, yeah, you're going to screw that up. So I'm going to plant this in something, probably a pair of vice grips, since I don't have a vice. And I'm going to use a uh, Dremel, hopefully, to cut through here not damage that. So that's the next part. Eye protection. Eyes are pretty darn necessary and from what I understand pretty expensive to have replaced. <laughs> if I just gnaw at it. I'll be able to control it a little better. I can barely see through these goggles. Let's see what that looks like. There's a little ridge in the middle. That was probably off camera. I had metal because sparks came out. There's a ridge in the middle there, so.
Then I get her and get past that little ridge. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I knew this was going to be the hardest part of this repair. I knew it. Well, one of the bearings fell out. That's a good sign. It still spins freely once I get my fingers out of the way. So that's good. That was in between the two bearings. And so all that's left is the other bearing. And yeah, it's gonna pop right out. That's gonna pop. That's gonna pop right out of there. Once you get your big sausage fingers in there, that'll pop right out. And it still spins and uh you can see I nicked it a little bit. But I think it's fine. As long as the bearings themselves are still intact and it still spins smoothly. That'll be fine. So yeah, basically I had to just do another damage to it to get it to, to twist a little bit. And that twist was all it needed for the bearing to let go. So, Well, as these things usually go, after I've removed three of these V-wheels, I discovered a procedure that seems to work. The very first one you saw me do, not so much. Um, the second one, I was trying to do like the first one, and then I was trying to clamp the, uh, the V-wheel from the side into the vice grips. And when I did, it slipped off, popped about four feet in the air, and when it landed, one side of the bearings had come out about half the way, so I was able to get that one out and push the other one out, so that was just an accident. And for this last one, I couldn't, re I couldn't recreate the happy accident. Um, so I decided on this last one to, instead of trying to clamp it from this side, which is very precarious and, uh, and uh, you know, I decided to clamp it like this, which I did, and then come in with the Dremel just straight on this way. And I just kind of went to one side a little more than the other until I saw my first spark. That let me know I'd hit the bearing, eased over to the other side, saw my first spark over there and stopped. And when I did, I got to this point, put in a flat screwdriver, gave it a twist, popped right open. So now it's, it's popped right loose and I should be able to, uh, yeah, bearings will, bearings will just pop right out now. So that's what wound up working. Everything's back together. Moving smoothly. I don't know how I damaged those three wheels, but got the new ones on there. And we'll see if it happens again. But I didn't go nearly as tight this time. Maybe that was it. <laughs>